Let's, let's get rolling on the slides because I think we, we, can, we can see all of this. And this, this, um, this picture is from a night in Rome where you went for a Valentino party. And Stephen did something quite remarkable here. He did. So it was Valentino's 25th anniversary, and he threw this incredible, huge weekend extravaganza. Uh, we flew there. Uh, I was allowed to go along with everybody else invited to look at the archives and choose some outfits. So we cho chose one to go to the exhibition. Um, there were a few outfits, and then there was an outfit for the gala, and Stephen was like, take that green and white checkered thing, and say, you know, get the pink gown with your red hair. And so I'm getting ready. Um, there was no glam teams back then. I would just usually do my own hair and makeup and he was there and he threw the rollers in my head and then um, he said do you want some help and I said sure and then he starts painting me and he started as an illustrator and he even taught it at Parsons and um, he was doing my eyeliner and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to look so bad. What do I say? <laughs> because, no, he's doing these strokes. He's going like this, and I'm like, what is he doing? And then, and then he does my eyebrows, and there's stroke, 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 stroke. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, because you can just tell when they're not in the right place, or you can, you can feel when they're not in the right place, the, the makeup artist. You just know. And then I take the mirror, and it's, a perfectly straight line. I, I, I was blown away. He could, do, he, could, he could design the dress, he could do the makeup, he could do the hair, then he could take the picture. Yeah, he could do it That's all. That's his genius. Yeah. He could do it all. But like, I was his Barbie doll that weekend and it was so much fun. And we got to meet G uh, Gina Lola Brigida and all the, we, we had such a blast. And it was just dress up and fun. Next slide, please. Humor. So this was, I have to say, out of all of the fashion campaigns I ever did in my career, um, my favorite were for Barney's New York, which, is, uh, which was a oh, glorious, incredible department store. Um, it's unfortunately no longer in existence, but um, these shoots that we did were so much fun, and I don't know how to say this, but they were almost easy. We had an incredible art director, Ronnie Cook Newhouse, and she, she gets it. She let us be free. She almost let me do the styling myself. She, she let us just do what we do instead of putting restrictions on us, instead of making us do things that weren't us. She was just, she came with these ideas and we just elaborated on it and it was just so much fun. It was, and we have, you know, the idea is you have to sell fashion, so there's a shoe on my head. <laughs> and, and, and this, this chimp was so darling, but she was, um, she was a toddler, so she was still in diapers, and they said to me, whatever you do, don't let go of her, because she was looking at the pipes on the ceiling, and all she wanted to do was swing. <laughs> and they said, do you think you can get her to kiss you? And she was not interested, because she was looking at the pipes. So I said to someone, grab a candy off of the craft service table. So I have a candy in my mouth. And when she saw that candy, she got so happy. <laughs> and the picture was done. The things you do to get the shot. 
I, I, I think this is a lovely picture because something that's missed in, in Stephen's work um, is humor, and he's a very funny guy. And I love it when the, the, there's more pictures later on where um, he gets you mugging, you know. I think they're really, we'll, we'll come up to that. Let's have another slide with this. This is one of my favorite pictures in the book. And this is Cuba, 1989, and... It's, it's actually Miami. Miami, oh, mm -hmm. it is? I had a Cuban boyfriend. <laughs> in the story, in the story, in the story. That is your real tan. Yes. Um, we did discuss this with Fide in our fabulous publisher. Um, they thought that maybe it was inappropriate, and I sent them pictures of me from that era, and this was me before I knew about sun safety. <laughs> I used to go to Saint-Tropez when I lived in Paris. If I was free, I'd go to Saint-Tropez on the weekends. When I was in New York, I would top it off with a session in the sun tanning bed. Um, so from the age of 33, I really haven't been in the sun because I suffered from, I started suffering from melasma. And I then was, sun safety was explained to me and why it is so necessary. But that's my body with Lubiderm, which is body lotion. And that is my true color. It was incredible, but... Um, yeah, so I was, we were shooting in Miami, and I had the Cuban boyfriend in the photos, and I, we, we did it in the back alleys, so I wasn't, you know, a rich woman. I was, you know, more of a peasant, and um, I helped hang the laundry up in the back, and just so you know, Mom, I know you're listening. Um, I knew how to hang up laundry outside, because we had a clothesline, and I hated it, but... I knew how to do it. Was Orbe who did the hair, was he Cuban? Orbe's, yeah, Orbe was Cubano, okay, yes, and so he's from Miami. We have yeah. Cuban hair as well as a Cuban yeah, boyfriend. Yeah, Cuban hair, <laughs> yeah. So next photo, please. This, I think this photo is a wonderful illustration of the way you trusted Stephen. Uh, in, in the things he could get you to do, the things, the, the things that you would do for him. Yeah. Your foot was bleeding in this photo, wasn't it? I don't remember that. They told me that. Um, I just, I'll do anything for a good picture, and I think it's a good picture. Um, I just said, do you think we can get it? Like, how long, you know, if I do it, if I hang? And then he was, you know, I'm up there upside down. He's like, can you do it on one leg? And I'm like... Oh, okay, <laughs> if, you, if you get it quickly. And then we have Garen just out of frame, uh, ready to catch me. And I'm like, what's he gonna do if I come down head first? I mean, <laughs> so I really had to trust myself there. Were you, were you ever hurt? Maybe, I don't know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Not, if the picture's good, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next photo, please. Actually, I have been hurt and cut, and, but it's okay. Yeah. It's all good. Now, the Galliano dress from the pinup collection, 1995. Um, you hung this dress at the end of your bed. Well, I, so this is my favorite dress I've ever worn. It just felt so good and so exquisite and that was one of my favorite fashion shows um, I love John Galliano and he gifted it to me I, I couldn't believe it and I used to have it on a mannequin in my bedroom and when I would open my eyes I'd see this you know sunshiny happy dress and it just it just made me happy but then there came a point where I could tell just the elements of my bedroom. I mean, 
it wasn't so dusty, it wasn't windy, it wasn't, you know, I don't know. I could just see it starting to, I don't know, lose its oomph. So I, I didn't think it was being protected properly, so I donated it to the Costume Institute, the Anna Winter Costume Institute at the Met in New York. Do you, have, do you have favorite dresses that, that you keep that you have kept from from your years as a model that that instantly evoke a moment for you, like a particularly happy time or a challenging I have, time? I have a few. I have a few. I love like my Chanel suits. They don't fit me any longer, but I have some. Everything's gonna go to the museum, though. Anything nice. And remember that in the show as well, with the cars, the old cars. That was an incredible moment. Can we have the next shot, please? Tell me about this one, because this is, this is late 80s, and I'm not quite sure I remember what this, who, who's the designer here? So, this was at a time when there were no meetings about what the editorial shoot was going to look like, what theme it was going to be. It was, this was French folk, I believe. And a lot of times in the studio, we would just receive the suitcase, or as Stephen likes to say, it was a duffel bag of clothes and the stylist would take them out and steam them and we had to that day come up with a story make a story and i don't remember how we got here it took a while there was a lot of fun and games but we got here and i remember francois nars the makeup artist um, naming her Bijou, and I said, oh, I know who Bijou is, and she was this character that Brassai used to shoot in the 30s. And um, so that's where we got our inspiration, and we call her Bijou. In the book, um, Billy Norwich in the intro talks about you creating characters for yourself when you're doing shoots and giving them names. So did Bijou ever appear anywhere else or was this a There's, one Bijou appearance? had a couple, a few pages in that issue. Did she ever come back? Yeah, she, she appeared on maybe, maybe Francois Nars was Bijou too. I don't know, there were a few people that ended up being Bijou. Being Bijou that oh. day. It was the <laughs> clinic, I mean. <laughs> okay, next please. Uh, we, we were talking about mugging before, um, pulling faces and being prepared to, you said always look beautiful. But you know, this is, this is, a, this is a very kind of, this is a very striking image where you're doing something very strange to your face. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of clothes sent to us <laughs> that time. <laughs> and there's, there's other, um, in the story, we just, we called it the torture story, but I'm not really, I don't know. I've been having f so much fun, so it doesn't feel like torture, but he was like, Let, yeah, pull your face, but like, pretty, pretty, you know, <laughs> okay. And um, I'm wearing Azadine Alaya gloves. And that also is actually one of my favorite I photos. See it. I see a, that photo every morning. A lot every... of people love this yeah, I see that photo every morning because it's hanging on my wall. Aww. It's my yellow dress. Aww. So what's the next one? Oh, characters, yes. We, we're talking about Bijou as a character. And something that Stephen and you made together were these incredibly evocative moments where you could be Sophia Loren, you could be Jean Lola Brigida, you could be Marilyn Monroe, and here, Catherine Hepburn. And I can't believe that that wasn't the intent. Apparently, this occurred after you'd been, you know, after you started work, that 
you look like Catherine Hepburn in these photos. Yeah, that day was so bizarre, it never happened again. Um, the Sophia Loren um, inspiration, um, you know, 50s film goddess, Italian, because my parents were both born in Italy, so I am of uh, Southern Italian descent. Um, so the Sophia Loren and all that, we, we worked that for a while, that image. But this day, again, the duffel bag ar arrived and we have to make a story and I don't know what direction, we tried so many directions with the hair, nothing was happening and then all of a sudden a Polaroid appears and someone says, uh, probably Stephen, oh, she looks like Catherine Hepburn in this. And I'm like, what? How can, oh, so now I'm Sophia Loren and Catherine Hepburn, okay. And so, Gina Lola Brigida. And <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we somehow the way my face was grabbing the light that day, that's what we got. Do you do you think that um, I, I mean you, something? Another one of your classic lines was that that some, along the lines of you you will do absolutely anything as long as you don't have to speak. Did you think that this was this was a acting for you? These were, yeah, I would, these were I would be a movie star, film star, if it was like the silent era. <laughs> I don't want to repeat lines over and over. That's, and I never really wanted to do movies because I couldn't imagine being in the same outfit for two months or the same. <laughs> I mean, never. Well, I think that's the screen's loss because you, you did all of these, you played these roles so convincingly. Let's have the next shot. This, this photo means a lot to you, doesn't it? It really does. So this is the, another Barney's campaign and Ronnie brought me the best accessory. She brought me the most fabulous men. Um, incredible men from uh, ex-mayors, composers, actors, uh, magicians, uh, the list goes on and on. And um, some were, most were very cooperative. And then some just didn't get it or didn't really, I don't know. He, Tony Bennett, what a gentleman, so much fun. He just oozed like grace. And he knew he had to help me. So here we are. Okay, we're going to sing along. And I'm like, I'm singing with Tony Bennett. Oh my God, I hope he's deaf. <laughs> and he knew, he made the picture and he helped us so much and it was just so lovely and I just respect him so much and I love his music and this is like, what a great souvenir to have. Uh, is, it, is it true that when you saw this picture of yourself, you, you, you kind of wish that this is the way this is the way you saw your, you, this is the way you wanted to see yourself forever, that this was the perfect composition for you. Well, it is me, but it's nice to look. My mother might say, presentable. <laughs> like, I would not stop to put lipstick on if there were a fire in my home, but you should always look presentable, and I don't. And I thought, oh, I look, I don't know, yeah, I would like to look like that all the time. It's never gonna happen again, but yeah. Did, did, you, did, did, you ever look at, did you ever look at photos and think, that is the real me? Did you ever, did you ever get close to recognizing yourself in the images that, that you made with Stephen? That's not the real me. Did we get close? There's some with Stephen, I did, yeah, sure. I don't like doing the real me. Those, those are the hardest photos to do. What was, the real, what was the closest you got to the real you, do you think? There's, there's, when he has me laughing, those ones feel real. 
And there's another one in the book where I've got my chin up, I've got very short hair, and I just have a little brow. And it was a cover try. That felt like me. But it's hard to do, I don't know, when, when somebody, like I can't take a selfie because I look stupid in selfies. And I look like, I don't know, I don't want to look like me. I want to look like a character. I don't think my arms are long enough to take selfies. I always look really, really <laughs> no. awful. I just don't bother. So let's look at the next one. <clears throat> I mean, this is one of my favorite Vogue covers that you did. And, and it's, believe it or not, in the rest of the photos, we don't actually have one of you with red hair. And so I thought this was a... Oh, yeah, I, I quickly and chose these the other day and I didn't think to include the red hair. I only had red hair for three months. It was a very uh, difficult color to maintain. But that shoot was so easy. That suit came out of the duffel bag and um, I believe those are my shoes that Carl Lagerfeld had said I could walk out with from the fashion show. So we went for like a, an easy 40s, early 50s vibe. You changed your hair color 17 times in five years. What did that process mean to you? I mean, the, the notion of, of building character, building characters is, and not just hair color, you actually changed the cut as well. I mean, my hair grows fast, but it would be very difficult to kind of adjust it that often in five years. But what, what did all of that mean to you, that those, those transformations? W w did you feel you were using, you were, you, you were actually using the career to, you are using modeling to make a statement about? Actually, Okay, so after the initial haircut first happened, which I didn't want to do, and it wasn't that well received initially, I got canceled from a lot of fashion shows, um, then they caught on. The, I had to convince the fashion industry first, and then it was Steven's idea to like, oh, let's just bleach the top of your head and you could have like a Warhol look. And then he was like, well, might as well go all the way and bleach your hair out. And that was the night before the George Michael video. We did that in my kitchen at 4 a.m. <laughs> and then I think I kept the blonde hair for about nine months. And to go back to brunette, you have to go through a red phase as they're putting the pigment back in the hair. And he said, well, let's just, let's stop there. Let's, let's see what this looks like. But none of it was contrived. It was all spontaneous. And I had so much fun with it. And work became like easier. And then nobody was, ex they didn't care how I was showing up if I was coming with something new or they just went with it. And I just think hair cuts hair color. It's all a great way of expressing yourself. I'm all for expressing yourself. And none of this was like planned, like, oh, what are we gonna do next? It just sort of happened. But it, it's kind of strange that hardly anybody else took your cue. I mean, it was such an, it was such an incredibly, it was so dynamic in magazines and shows to see these changes. You anticipated them, actually. You know, what's Linda going, going to be doing today? And it, it feels that, it, it's another thing which suggests to me that this was a very rare, a very well, rare combination of people, people and circumstances. Some people have their look, which is like their brand, and they're a lot smarter than me business-wise because they, you know, they stick with what's, you know, them. Um, I just kept having fun with it. And then, I don't know, I, I grew my hair out and I, got, I stuck with that for a while because I don't like the way hair feels on the face. So I love to be able to put it up and I'm growing my hair right now.
Did you have a favorite hair color out of the 17? I think I like the red the best. Mm. She was fun. She was a lot of fun. She, was, she, was, she wasn't ginger, was she? No, that was jungle red. Ah. So now we have another shot. And this is from the first shoot you ever did with Stephen. So yes, this is the first shoot I did with Stephen Mizell. And those are the gums. And <laughs> Um, Orbe had the wind machines, and Carlene is so impeccable with her styling, and she placed everything on there. And what we couldn't believe, the reason why I love this photo is, we can't believe that they published it because I'm holding a piece of Lucite as a cigarette, and cigarettes were like forbidden in, in American magazines. And for us, that was like a big coup that we can't believe they let that pass. Maybe they didn't notice. I didn't. Anyways, the, the shooting was a very happy, fresh, you know, look with all black clothes and all lucite jewelry and skin. And that is the beginning of your relationship, your professional relationship. That was our first day. Everything that we've just seen began, we kind of spiraled down to the, to the, to the origin story here. 